I know he's watching us right now. Um, he's watching over us humble. There's so many of you showed up to him. Respect. Um, he never likes to open up and put himself out there. So given that he's probably going to be pretty embarrassed right now. Um, you know, one thing he would never want for any of us is to be here feeling sad and feeling sorry for him and his family. So that's why today I want to take the time, not so much to mourn his passing, but more so to celebrate his life and legacy, mm -hmm. to give it some meaning, and to also maybe give you some insight to who he was behind the smile. To say Nathaniel was a kind and generous man would be a complete understatement. He always had a way of making you feel confident and good about yourself after every encounter you had with him. If you came to him troubled by something, you would walk away feeling taken care of. If you've ever asked him for a favor, you know he would always go out of his way to come through for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is why in all my years, I've never known anyone with a single negative thing to say about him. Now, I was lucky enough to have this man as my father for the past 39 years. He was my role model, my protector, my mentor, my biggest supporter, and critic. This man who, when I was growing up, would wear the same shoes until the soles were riddled with holes, just so that I could have a pair of Nike Air Jordan sneakers to wear for school. He's provided for our family, ensuring we had everything we needed, even if it meant sacrificing his own needs. He was our protector and comfort during hard times, always keeping a calm and steady smile so that his family would never have to worry about anything. Growing up, Nathaniel was always in front of a camera. Um, he was a child actor before he was 10 years old. Um, he was later featured in uh, stage and screen performer well into his 30s. Um, when I was young, my mother brought me um, to one of his uh, plays and I remember just sitting there and um, I didn't even know where, where, where I was, but um, all of a sudden I see him walking on, on the stage and I saw him and I was like, hey, I know you, that's my father. And I'm like, daddy, daddy, daddy. And I kept yelling at the top of my lungs and you know, he, he heard it and he got nervous and he got so nervous he forgot his line. <laughs> and, um, so his, his thank, thank God one of his actors uh, on stage whispered him his next line. So he was able to continue and keep going. Um, but despite this, his profession, he was, he was actually one of the most humble people you could ever meet. Back when he was working um, as a talk show host for the World Journal TV station, uh, people would often recognize him in the streets of Chinatown and Flushing. Uh, they would stare and smile and sometimes come up and ask, hey, are you that guy on TV? Or where do I know you from? Um, most times he would just simply respond with a gracious smile or play around like he didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> but uh, no matter how much he acted like it wasn't a big deal for him, you could always tell that he loved being recognized by random strangers. Um, after they left, he would turn to me and say, see Josh, you may not think you might not think that highly of me, but your daddy is somebody in this world. <laughs> As a lot of you might not know uh, this, but one of Nathaniel's greatest love was the sport of basketball. Uh, my uncle, his brother, told me when he was younger, he hated to exercise. Uh, you couldn't pay him to go jog or pick up a weight, but if you gave him a basketball, he would go on the court and play pickup games for hours with his schoolmates. Mm -hmm. um, basketball was also how him and I bonded. Um, growing up, if he wasn't in the backyard showing me how to shoot a jump shot, um, we would be in the living room almost every night watching NBA games, yelling at the TV screen during intense moments, waking up my mother, who would then come down and scream at us and question our mental stability. <laughs> If I was working late that day and couldn't be there to watch the game with him, um, he would always record it for me and, and so that I can watch it when I got back. And like clockwork, he would always leave the porch light on for me and a big bowl of fruit on the table uh, before he went to bed. Um, food was very important for him. 
if you've ever had a chance to eat out with him, there's hardly a single Chinese dish that he hasn't tried or knew some interesting tidbit fact about. Um, he searched newspapers daily, researching the latest restaurant openings. Um, he clipped the article and showed it to me so, so we can go and give it a try the first chance we get. Um, and on Sundays, it was always a debate after church about where to go for lunch. Um, he would say, let's go get Cantonese food. I know a restaurant owner, he'll give us this discount on lobster. <laughs> <laughs> then I would be like, Dad, I'm tired of eating Chinese food. Uh, let's go get Korean barbecue or something. And, uh, and although he wasn't a big fan of spicy Korean food, he would always still go with me because that was our weekly time together. And then, Josh, come over and eat. We have food here waiting for you. This was the phone call I got practically every night. He would then proceed to name all the dishes my mother or him made that day. Uh, and if I couldn't, and if I, if I couldn't pick up the phone when he called, he would leave it as a voicemail on my phone. Um, so I literally have dozens of voicemails in my inbox with pretty much the same message over and over again. Um, Dad was also a bit of a hypochondriac. Um, if you don't know what that means, that means somebody who's abnormally anxious about their health. Um, some days he would just look at me and say, Josh, your face is looking a bit yellow today. Uh, you should get you checked out for jaundice. Uh, I sure hope it's not liver disease. And I would look at him and be like, what are you talking about? I'm perfectly fine, Dad. Why would you even say that? I later found out from his cousins during one of our China trips that apparently this, was a, this behavior was nothing new. Um, when they were all growing up together as children, um, he, would, he would go around accusing everyone of having all types of debilitating diseases uh, until they were all annoyed and fed up with him. Um, he was always so concerned with everyone else's health and happiness, but when it was his turn to be sick, concern was the last thing he wanted from any of us. Even up until his last days, when he was barely eating and in constant pain from open sores on his body, he would always put up a front like he was fine and feeling much better because he never wanted any of us to worry. I know even for many of you, it's a bit of a surprise to know that he was even sick. The reason for that is because he never wanted anyone to feel bad for him. He never felt comfortable when people would come up to him with sympathetic words because he really didn't want to be an emotional burden for anyone else. Um, church was a staple in dad's life. Every Sunday, we would drive across the George Washington Bridge to attend Sunday service at the church in New York City, where he was a devoted member of the Body of Christ for the past 32 years. Even after his uh, cancer diagnosis, he never complained or felt sorry for himself. He believed wholeheartedly that it was all part of God's plan and that God would take care of him. To understand it all, I'd like to share with you a couple scriptures, if you don't mind. Isaiah 57, 1 and 2 states, The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taking away, taking away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They will find rest as they lie in death. Good people pass away, and oftentimes it's before their time. But this is not because God is not happy with them or that they've done anything wrong. But it's because God is protecting them from the evil to come. For those who follow godly paths will truly rest in peace upon their death. My faith in God has been key to how I've been coping with this whole year and a half long process. Taking him to chemo treatments and doctor visits every week, we all endured alongside him, keeping his spirits up through group prayer. These past 18 months have been a long journey for me. It feels so surreal that he's no longer here. The feeling of loss is still tough to swallow, but they say, you don't really become a man until you lose your father. Right before he passed, I told him that I'll never forget all the things that he did for me and my mother. And I would honor him by continuing to tell his story for the rest of my life. Amen. He couldn't really speak too well at the time, but he looked at me and nodded. And he. Then he told me that he was proud of me. That's all I ever wanted to hear from him. Through this entire ordeal, I've personally grown and learned so much. But most of all, just to take the time 
and treasure every moment with your family right. and loved ones. And taking each day with them, never taking each day with them for granted. I hope that everyone here can take what I'm saying today to heart. And when you go home tonight, give someone you care about a hug, a phone call, or a simple conversation. Just and express to them some things you've been holding back mm -hmm. from telling them. Mm -hmm. Because life is so short and we can all be here today and gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I want to thank everyone again for expressing your concerns and condolences. Mm -hmm. It means a lot to me and my family mm -hmm. to see you all come together. I now leave you with this quote from the poet Maya Angelou. A great soul serves everyone all the time. A great soul never dies, but brings us together again and again. Much love to all of you. God bless you. Thank you. Amen.